Hello, Kidney Warriors. James here from Dadvice TV, your online kidney health coach. And this is Dadvice TV Live. For those of you joining us for the first time, welcome. Great to have you here. Dadvice TV is a great place to learn about kidney disease by talking to professionals that are sharing tips and tricks and all sorts of information. And if you are new, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is James. I am a kidney warrior living with kidney disease and doing great. I like to say I'm kicking kidney disease to the curb because I have taken control of it. It's not controlling my life. Now tonight, this is our first video of 2023. So happy 2023, everybody. Tonight, we're gonna kick the year off talking about common mistakes people make with their diet so that you can avoid those mistakes and start off 2023 on the right foot and have a great 2023 ahead of you. And to learn about that, we're gonna bring in an expert. Which expert are we bringing in? You guys all know and love her. Please make a big, big warm welcome for renal dietitian from plantpoweredkidneys.com, Jen Hernandez. Hey, Jen. Hey, James. Hey, everybody. So thrilled to be back. Happy New Year. I am very excited to chat with you all tonight. I mean, my cheeks already hurt from smiling because we always have such a good time talking uh, together. So I'm absolutely thrilled for us to be connecting again in 2023. Awesome. And tell those that are new a little bit about you. Yes. So as James said, my name is Jen. I am a renal dietitian. So I am a board certified registered dietitian who's also gone through the work of becoming board certified in especially kidney nutrition, renal nutrition. So I have spent the majority of my career helping people with kidney disease take care of their kidneys. And a lot of that work was in dialysis. But I saw over and over again, people in dialysis being, it's, I kind of blend all the words together, sad, scared, upset about being on dialysis and wishing they made a change. And that's when I decided to create Plant Powered Kidneys. And I teach people how to eat more plants and to have a better diet that actually protects their kidneys rather than going the traditional healthcare route of let's sit and wait and just see what happens or let's wait until you get on dialysis, which is something that I know a lot of people hear, but I'm here to tell you that you don't actually have to wait. And tonight specifically, I'm really excited to focus on these early stages of CKD because there's a lot of misinformation out there and there, there are a lot of mistakes people make. And I want to help you avoid those mistakes as much as possible. So we're going to talk about that tonight. And in the future, if you want to connect with me, with me or learn more about plant powered kidneys, you can check out our blog at plantpoweredkidneys.com. We have a ton of really helpful articles and resources there for you all for free. You can also find us on Facebook in our free but private Facebook group for plant powered kidneys. You can meet thousands of like minded individuals who want to take care of their kidneys by eating a better diet that includes more plants and more varieties. So I hope some part of this helps to enlighten your world and help you see that it's not doom and gloom when it comes to kidney disease. If you've been following James for a while, you know that he's all about positivity as am I. And um, I am just so thrilled. I have some great stories to share tonight that I had for with some people today. So absolutely thrilled to talk with you more about this tonight. Yeah, and for anyone who's new here, when I was diagnosed, I was stage five. They wanted me to go on dialysis and I, I begged my doctor, just give me a chance. I was certain they were wrong in the diagnosis, which they weren't, but I got my blood pressure under control and then I focused on my diet. And I made a lot of mistakes, probably most of them that you're gonna to mention tonight. Um, I probably made those and my best thing that helped me was listening to renal dietitians, experts that know how our kidneys actually work and how important eating a healthy diet is to helping keep our kidney function, to maintain it, to slow down kidney disease. And I was one of the lucky ones that was actually able to regain some of my kidney function. My, my labs got better. Um, practically every symptom I suffered went away. So diet is extremely important. 
even when you're there at kidney failure, but the sooner you can start working on it, the sooner you can learn about eating right, not making um, the common mistakes, the better off you'll be. Yeah, that's so good. Um, yeah, it's you do such a good job sharing your story and motivating people, James. And um, I hope that some of the stories that I can bring from our students and clients will also help motivate people watching to, to know that there is no matter what stage you're at, there is something that you can absolutely do to take care of your kidneys. Um, whether you're stage one or in dialysis or a transplant, anything in between, there's always something that we can learn from and benefit from in taking care of ourselves. And there's a lot of myths and like I said, mistakes out there. So we'll talk about some of these tonight, the ones that I see really, really commonly in the early stages of CKD and hopefully help you understand how you can avoid those and protect your kidneys or even see better lab results like you did, James. Woohoo! All right, let's get started. <laughs> Yes. So uh, the first one that I have to bring up, which I think is pretty common and no one's going to be entirely shocked about this, but it's all about fearing potassium. It's all about this idea that potassium is bad. And I get it because there's a lot of information out there about the lo low potassium diet. I mean, we talk about the low potassium diet at plant-powered kidneys as well. So that information is out there and it's very prevalent. But again, this is for people who are in like that stage three, earlier stage area. If you go into all of these food fears and you start pulling away so many things, what you're also losing is the opportunity to help your kidneys because potassium is actually incredibly powerful for our kidney health. And there's also evidence out there to show that potassium helps benefit the ways that, or, or the problems that inherently cause the kidneys damage. So what I'm really talking about here is blood pressure, that the blood pressure issues we see, it's one of the top causes of kidney disease, but then people start pulling back on potassium and then they lose that opportunity to help their blood pressure. Um, we do think about lower sodium too, but really the opportunity can be potassium and focusing on potassium rich foods and understanding more about the power of potassium and really what to look for. So that's, that's kind of the first thing that comes to mind for me because I find that I talk so much about potassium. We've talked, I don't know how mm -hmm. many times about potassium, right? It's just something that always comes up and, and people are really, really afraid of it. But I, I just have to say, it's not something to be afraid of. It's something to take time in learning and understanding and, and really getting that feeling for what potassium can do for you rather than all of those handouts of low potassium and foods to avoid. Yeah, and when I was first diagnosed, I went on that super restrictive, not by doctor orders out of my own mind by looking on the internet right. mm -hmm. and i was like uh oh potassium i can't have avocados i'll never eat one again mm -hmm. and um, i had avocado on my salad for lunch today love avocado now it's all about portion control and yeah. not over restricting myself yeah and and that's 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 it too with kind of understanding more about it and how it can fit in something that we talk about a lot a lot in our plant powered kidneys course is that power of potassium and i spend i spend a lot of the program teaching our students about really what potassium is what it does how it helps and those ranges to look for we also include those meal plans and recipes that have higher amounts of potassium and some students will see that and think oh my gosh that's so high but honestly it's just about getting the body back up to utilizing the potassium you should be having because 98% of Americans don't eat enough potassium to begin with, let alone talking about this restriction and going on a low potassium diet, which many think means zero milligrams of potassium. And that's just terrifying. Yeah. I, well, I tried the zero milligrams of salt for a couple of days. That did not go well. No, I mean, zero of anything. Like, does it sound like who's going to sit there to an empty plate and expect to have good results? 
even with kidney damage, your kidneys, your body still need nutrients. It needs a lot of this fuel to, in order to take care of itself, starving yourself. And another thing that we see is people losing weight unintentionally because they're just restricting so much and they're not eating enough to nourish their bodies. That's where this imbalance can happen because people get so worried about potassium. And just like another side note around this topic, that there's the research to show that dietary potassium, the, the potassium that we get from avocados, tomatoes, potatoes, etc., that isn't necessarily correlated. It's not necessarily matching up to the potassium you have in your blood draw, because there's a lot of factors around potassium that can change your blood potassium level. And they have done research specifically with patients with kidney disease who have a higher potassium diet and they found their blood potassium didn't change. So it's more about understanding about the power of potassium and not, again, not, not fearing it so much. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the next one that I have for you, the next big mistake, and this one, I know we've talked a lot about, which could be a hot topic, just using the term vegan and thinking that oh. a vegan diet is the answer. This is something that even in our Facebook group, I know comes up a lot and it can be, some people feel it like controversial, but with plant-powered kidneys, we talk about a plant-based diet mm -hmm. and there's not really a standard definition for a plant-based diet, but for us, we're talking about that foundation. The majority of your foods are coming from plants, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, nuts, and seeds. These are the whole foods that are really, really nourishing to us and really helpful. But the mistake I see is when people talk about a vegan diet and then they go to the freezer aisles of the grocery store, they go to the oh, no. deli aisles of, oh. I know James, we've talked about this. Sodium through the roof. Exactly, exactly. And just because it's vegan, I was just talking with somebody about this literally like four or three hours ago. We were just talking about just because it says vegan doesn't mean it's kidney healthy. It's very, very different. And we can't make this assumption. But again, a lot of people, especially in early stages, they think, oh, I've heard vegan or I've heard plant based is the way to go. I'm giving up all animal meat, I'm giving up all animal proteins and animal foods. Again, going into this kind of a fad diet, not understanding what is happening and why these changes should be made. So there are many people who can benefit from a vegan diet, yes. But if you go into it thinking that you can stack up and load your freezer up with the boxed freezer dinners, and that you can grab a bunch of pre-made cereal and oatmeal, and then you can do, I don't know, some other some other to go lunch item, just because it says vegan, doesn't guarantee that that's gonna be what's really protective for your kidneys. Yeah, I learned, you know, I, I have not gone, you know, I, I am mostly plant-based. Um, mm. I start with the vegetables. That's what I start with in my meal and I plan around that. Um, for example, earlier today for lunch, I had a, I had a nice break at work. You know, I was working from home today and I made me a salad. I chopped up some avocado. I boiled some egg and I chopped that up, mixed it in. And then I, I um, used the air fryer and made one little chicken breast, put some lemon pepper on it, cut it up, put it on there. Had uh, my uh, balsamic vinaigrette dressing. It was a very heart healthy diet, but it wasn't all, you know, um, uh, plant-based or vegetarian mm -hmm. or vegan or anything like that. And it works great for me. Um, I did add some croutons. I should have skipped those. Me and carbs just do not work well. Um, but otherwise I'm, I'm doing good with all that. Well, I think that's a great point to, to show because people know people who have been following your show, they know your story of your success and you are giving that proof that there isn't just like one set path. I know there's a lot of people out there in the kidney world who will say, this is my diet and you have to follow it to a T and you can't eat any of that stuff and it's gonna kill your kidneys. And no, that's not the way it works. We cannot cram a renal diet into a cookie cutter idea and it's not a one size fits all. And that's why it's so important to learn about these nutrients and understand how to have these conversations with your healthcare team 
so that you know what works for you. Because following something blindly, like a laid out plan from somebody just who happened to have that experience. And I'll say, I don't have kidney disease. I am what they call book smart. I am not street smart in this, but I am book smart in this. I go by the evidence and the results. And that's what I teach is what is evidence-based and proven through groups of people with kidney disease, not just one person who decided to follow a diet and is replicating it. That can be incredibly scary because again, somebody could be following like your lunch example, James, they could be doing that and it could be very, very difficult for them because of a food intolerance or mm -hmm. maybe the animal protein is harder on their kidneys with where their stage is at. We can't just take one type of diet and make and assume that everybody can follow it. I mean, man, if that was the case, how easy would that be that we could just have like, oh here's an easy guideline, eat this, It this, would this. be so much easier. <laughs> then they could label food kidney friendly at the store. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so much easier. And, and I, I'll tell you too, from people in our Plant Powered Kidneys course, we have had incredible results from people who still have animal proteins in their diet. Mm -hmm. And they've had a GFR going from the 50s to the 70s with still including some animal protein. They didn't give it up. It was part of their lifestyle. We've had some students who say, oh, you know, my, I, I'm a, my husband's a rancher and a farmer. And so we're going to have animal meat in our life. And so now it's more about learning about how to incorporate that into the diet and what that means and what to be looking for and how to understand what that is going to look like with for their lifestyle so making it something realistic that they feel really good about and not like they have to completely scrap their life and something they've built their life around so um it, it is possible and just because it's vegan doesn't mean that it is kidney friendly great point thank you <laughs> all right so the next mistake that I have, and this is also a pretty big one, I was actually, I mean, this is very fitting and this is why I suggested we talk about this tonight, James, is the biggest mistake, one of the biggest mistakes that I see, especially with people with early stage kidney disease, is that they don't make the commitment. And I see this because people can lose up to 90% of their kidney function and not feel a thing, not experience anything say they feel fine, everything is normal, they don't even realize their blood pressure is climbing up because their body is, our bodies are incredible and they will acclimate, they will get used to whatever we give it in the situation. You know, you, you move to a hot environment and you get used to the heat. You move to a cold environment, you get used to the cold. Your body is incredible. But when people don't have an urgency and they have something like stage 3B kidney disease and they feel fine and all they see are some numbers, and their healthcare practitioner is saying things like, don't worry about it. Let's just wait until stage four, or stage five, something like that. There's not a lot of urgency in that desire to make a change. When people want to make a change, there's usually a fire there. There is something going on that they're like, something needs to happen. And we do see this for people with stage five or stage four who are mm -hmm maybe already having discussions with their doctor about, you know, making changes or whatever the case is. But it's the people in stage three that worry me because there's this, there's this failure to commit, you know? See, and I'm going to say I fall somewhat in that category. Also, when I was diagnosed, I changed everything. I, I got scales. I was overdoing. I was weighing my food. Um, I went too extreme and then I had to learn because I didn't understand how important it was to work with the dietitian to learn how to eat food and how to make my meals. Uh, but now for probably the last like year, I've, I feel great. I, you know, I'm doing good. My labs look for me, they look really good. <laughs> you know, for some people, I'm sure they would be like, oh my goodness, they're, they, they would worry. Um, but I've started to relax a lot, especially with the carbs, you know, and, and um, you know, I'll allow myself to enjoy some things that I shouldn't be eating as much of or as often. I get too much of that. Um, but I am going to make it, I have made a commitment internally in my mind because I, I don't have that urgency that, mm -hmm. oh my goodness, I have to change 
to save my kidneys. I've gotten too comfortable, but I've made that that commitment in my mind that 2023, I'm going to get back on track. Uh, I'm finally moved. I've got the stress of that gone, so I'm going to start exercising again and watching portion sizes of my meals, and I'm going to cut down on that snack, and that's, that's my... My awful thing, working from home and snacking. Well, I think that it, it's great to be thinking about that. And and I know this time of year, you know, January and people talk about New Year's resolutions. Um, and that is something that it's important to be really thinking about, you know, what are we going to do moving forward? How are we going to make these changes? Um, I mentioned earlier that I, I had a call with a few of our course graduates and we do like a monthly touch base and it's incredible. I was, I was asking them this, this group, okay, what are your, what are your new year's plans or what are you looking at moving forward? Uh, what, what are, what are we here to support you with? And one of them who has had incredible results, she, her, after she had gone through, she, she took the course and she's worked with a dietitian at plant powered kidneys. She went to get her labs drawn. Her doctor, thought her labs were a mistake because of how much oh. they improved. Like she had such good labs. The doctor was like, we got to like, there's something going on. Her A1C, her hemoglobin A1C for, for blood sugars went from over 11 to eight. A huge wow. improvement. I know. Huge. huge improvement. Yes. So her labs looked so fantastic. And I mean, what a badge of pride. Like I was just so thrilled to hear the story that she was sharing with me today. Um, but she said her goal was to keep doing the plan that she had set out. She's continuing to work with us. She has support, which is incredible, incredibly helpful when it comes to sticking to a plan. So using the support of our group, using the support of her dietitian, she said, I'm gonna just going to keep doing what I'm doing, which is fantastic. And I was telling this group today that not everybody has that type of opportunity to say, I'm going to stick to this path. Because a lot of times this year, it's like, I'm going to totally revamp everything and I'm going to make all these changes. And it can kind of be like this cycle where, you know, we, we struggle and then we have to pick up with a new goal. But man, what an honor to say, I am on the right path. I am doing the right things. My labs are looking fantastic. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. Like, I just, I just think that's so incredible. Absolutely incredible. Yeah, that, it's that motivation to keep going. That's awesome. It is. And then another one of her, another one of our members, she was asking, we were talking about blood pressure and she just like nonchalantly talked about how she, st she was able to stop her blood pressure medication because her blood pressure has been so good that she is no longer on blood pressure medication and it's looking fantastic. I mean, it, it's absolutely incredible. I had such a good call with them today. It was, it was really, really heartwarming and to, and to be starting 2023 with them and talking about these exciting goals that they have met, the things that they have done and envisioning what they're going to be able to do. I hope they, I hope they were able to make this live today because I told them I'd be bragging about them. So I was well, just... we got a lot of people in the comments chatting. So hopefully they're there. I hope it, is, so, yeah. it warms my heart hearing stories like that. And I get emails where people share things like that. Yeah. Um, and it's all because of them. They made the effort to learn. They made the the decisions to to make choose this over this when it comes to food. And you know, temptation is difficult. So it's 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 all in them. And it's amazing that they've made these these great strides and are seeing these wonderful results. It just it does so much in my it heart, does. you know, I mean, and, it does. and for the rest of their life for yeah. them. Exactly. It's, we, we talk about how doing, investing in your health now and, and taking care of these things now, just like a retirement plan, like a 401k, it pays off dividends in your future. And we also were talking about the silver lining or the blessing in disguise that was where one of the participants felt like they were on a, the lower priority list of their doctor. And I said, well, you know what? There's a lot of people out there who are really, really sick and nephrologists have so many patients to cover. So if you're on the bottom of the priority list, it's because you're doing so well 
that they don't have to be hounding you. They don't have to be checking in with you every week. They don't have to be doing lab checks, you know, month to month, week to week to make sure that you are not going to have kidney failure or, or any risk there. So, um, you know, it's, it's something to be said when you don't, <laughs> when the doctor says, let's follow up in six months and you're, you're given more of that freedom back that your health is paying off. Yeah. Oh, I would love to only need six months in between doctor visits. <laughs> right? It's incredible. Some of the changes and we don't realize it until we stick to it and invest in ourselves and take that time and energy. And then we see it down the pipeline. It's not going to be immediate. Just like kidney disease, most times is not an immediate thing. It's, it's really, it's a chronic illness. It's a chronic condition. There's no treatment for it. So it's something that is really about kind of adapting your life to it because it's not going anywhere anytime soon. Even with transplant, it's still a diagnosis of kidney disease. You just have a, a, a few different like billing codes and the behind the scenes health <laughs> stuff, but, but it's still kidney disease. And so it's really something to be attentive to and not just stick your head in the sand and hope it goes away. Yeah. And I'll tell you in the comments right now, we have a lot of people sharing some great tips and giving each other props and support for the things yeah. that they're doing and sharing how successful they've been similar to the stories you're, you're uh, sharing with us. That's fantastic. Yeah, it is. It is absolutely so wonderful to, to, to know. And I'm sure for people who have either experienced it or, or, or haven't experienced it yet, just to see those different kinds of results it, 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 and and to know that it's possible because for so long in the CKD world, it really was a let's just wait until you get on dialysis and let's just wait oh. until your kidneys fail and then you'll have a dietitian or then we'll talk about nutrition. I mean, I'm talking about like all the things I've heard as a dietitian from that nutrition perspective, but um, it's, it's so much more about being proactive now and getting to the point where maybe you don't have to wait for dialysis. Maybe that's mm -hmm. not going to be in your timeline. Maybe that's not going to be something you need to be looking at. It, it's, it's, there's so many more options now, and it's just a matter of taking that initiative for yourself. And, oh my gosh, I can't, I'm sorry. I just got distracted by Cindy's comment. And I, sometimes I wish I could like my, so for those watching, I don't jinx that give me permission to comment because oh, I know- I'll bring it back up here. There you go. <laughs> I was just gonna say, I will be distracted. <laughs> and I am so honored that Cindy, it was part of the PPK community. And oh my gosh, to say, for the doctor to say, you don't have CKD anymore. It's incredible, incredible. So I, so I just want to say to everybody out there, you know, don't lose hope. Know that there is something you can do for yourself. There is something you can do, whatever that is, in taking care of your kidney health. And we know that there's no guarantee. We can never make promises in this world. But darn, never, ever do I want you to look back and say, I should have tried more. Because that was something I heard a lot when it came to the dialysis clinic. So many people saying, I wish I did something different. And I, I never want to hear that again. Yeah, uh, agree. I, and I've heard it from others, you know, who have shared, you know, that are on dialysis. They wish they would have known. They mm -hmm. wish they would have taken action on their own to learn about eating healthier and to do that. Um, and so many of them, their doctors pretty much like you explain, and we've all seen so many times, you know, pretty much said, hey, eat healthier, drink more water. I'll see you when you need dialysis. Not exactly that up front, but that's pretty much what they said, used to say so often. And they just let people's kidney function continue to decline instead of making small changes that could have prevented them from ever needing dialysis. Yeah. Yeah. And it's incredible. The, the advances that we have made and are continuing to make nutrition research is still a baby science, but there's, there's more that we continue to learn and that I want to continue to teach and, and educate people about. So plant powered kidneys is not going anywhere. We will continue to help people and, and pass on that knowledge and support to our students, our clients, our followers, um, you know, to, to do what we can to, Stop making dialysis clinics pop up like McDonald's for crying out loud. <laughs>
Oh, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Now, are there more common mistakes you want to share? Those were the three that I had outlined for, for our talk tonight. I mean, there's definitely, we could elaborate on a lot more and those to me those were the biggest ones that i've just heard time and time again i wanted to make sure that i covered but um i can definitely comment okay so there's a couple questions that i've seen pop up in our comments sure um, um and, and before that. you before you get to the questions one i would like to add a uh, common mistake it's over restricting yeah uh, i just want to remind everyone out there the person who should give you a restriction is your healthcare team, not mm -hmm. a person on YouTube, not a person on Facebook, not an article that you found through Google. It's mm -hmm. your healthcare team. They'll let you know specifically for you what restrictions you need and when you need them. So yeah. don't over restrict yourself and don't go crazy. You know, you got to eat healthy and live healthy, but the restrictions come from your mm -hmm. doctor, your dietitian, your healthcare team. Yeah, and I'll just say from a dietitian perspective, spoiler alert, I really don't do a lot of restrictions with my clients. There's there's really, the, the doors are pretty open into what they want to enjoy. So um, one of my clients wanted to have champagne for the holidays and for New Year's, and I was like, please enjoy and celebrate. And as long as the doctor's okay with it, I'm okay with it. So we are not here to restrict, we're, help, we're here to nourish you. We're here to help you see all of the good that this good food can do for you. Awesome. Now someone just asked, how did I find my dietitian? So I had an excellent doctor that I trusted, my family doctor. And I asked him, who would he recommend? And who would he go to? Who would he send his children to um, as a dietitian? And I got lucky um, and he knew one that was really good. I got with her and I'll tell you, the first visit I felt disappointed. Now I'm not talking about the dietitian in the hospital because that one, you know, they had like five minutes with me. That yeah. was it. And that was very That's disappointing. Yeah. But the first one I went in there and it was a conversation. We talked and I, I was expecting to walk away with the whole meal plan for the next six months or something. But she learned about me. What do I like? When do I cook? How do I cook? What do I, do I know how to cook? Uh, we talked a lot and she asked a lot of questions and then I came back and then she had a plan for me. And my favorite thing was she had all these samples of things. And there were things that, uh, you know, she's like, do you like this? Well, I don't think so. Here's a sample. Try it. I think you might like this. Or let's work these things. In. Just like you've taught me so many things to work into my diet yeah. and to try though i haven't tried mushrooms <laughs> so I'm, I'm, tell, I'm telling my i'm telling my community i'm like i'm gonna get them to do it it's happening 2023 but is my year jackfruit you know all these other things oh that's what a dietitian did for me so that's how i found mine i went to my doctor and got a recommendation and now that i'm in michigan i got a new doctor um she's changed up a few things um and I'm going to look soon for a dietitian so that I can, I got to cut carbs. I'm eating way too many carbs. I got to cut them. And I want to have a dietitian help get me on the right path, do a few visits with them. And that way I could set myself up for success this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it is. And somebody, Julie, commented about, you know, you don't get a dietitian until stage five. There are different there's different guidelines for different healthcare facilities. One trick that I did learn recently from another practitioner I thought was genius is if you ask for a referral to a dietitian and your healthcare practitioner says no, then you ask them to kindly document that in the note for your session and please get a copy of that note so that you have it on record that they refused you to have service. And that's for your record. So you have that documentation. They said no. Many times they will say, they'll, they'll kind of open the conversation a little bit more and talk, well, why do you want to see a dietitian or, you know, what's going on there? Well, I want to talk about my nutrition. I want to know about protein. I want to know about phosphorus. I want to know about potassium, anything like that. Or if they open the door and start talking to you about protein and um, how much protein you should eat, or if they say cut out animal meat, 
that's a great time to say, isn't that a great thing for me to talk with the dietitian about? Can you give me a referral to them? And again, opening up that conversation about getting to a dietitian and if they still say no, having that documentation that they refused and getting a second opinion. Or you can also connect with dietitians directly. That's how our clients work with us is you connect with them directly and you see if you would be a good fit to work together, if it would be something that would make sense. And if you feel good about chatting with them, because at the end of the day, um, we're going to teach you a lot, but you want to have a good relationship with them and you want to look forward to your sessions and you want to, you want to feel like you're being heard. Like, like James said, is that could be a really important part of it too. So you can reach out directly to dietitians as well. All right. Any questions you want to answer? And for those um, that are here, we're trying not to keep it at an hour. We're trying to keep it closer to half an hour because I know for some people, an hour is a long time to sit through. And don't worry, we'll be back. I will be back. I promise. <laughs> Um, the other question I know got a, a bit of traction in the group was asking about lab draws for stage three, those earlier stages. So that's, um, I believe it was Alicia who asked about how often labs, oh yeah, how often do CKD3 patients get labs? Yeah. So this is also going to be based on your provider. Um, typically, three to six months is what they're looking at. It, it doesn't always make sense to get more frequent labs because it's just a spot check of what's going on in that moment. Um, it's better for you to take action in between those, like set a goal for yourself, set some, some, set some kind of parameter or target that you want to achieve. Talk to your healthcare team about it so that you know in the two or three months, I'm sorry, three to six months, when you review those labs, you'll know what you're looking for. They may order labs more frequently if they're concerned about something, but just like I talked about being like lower on the doctor's priority list, you don't, you don't want to be too high up there because that could mean that it's not good. And you want to be taking care of yourself so you don't have to get those frequent lab checks. Um, there is some insurance parameters that kind of come in play there if insurance will, will approve more frequent lab testing. So that could also be a reason why your practitioner doesn't order labs more frequently. Um, but in general, three to six months is what I typically see for stage three. And then stage four and five can get to like the three to one month mark, depending on um, where the kidney function labs are trending. All right. Any other questions that you'd like to answer? There are quite a few in there. I know there's a lot. Um, oh, that's a good point, Julie. Yeah. So Julie said they gave me a talk with a regular dietitian, not a renal one. So there are differences, just like there's specialists for healthcare providers. You have your general healthcare provider, your primary, who kind of oversees everything and then sends you out to specialists. And then you have your specialist. You have a nephrologist for your kidneys. You have an endocrinologist for your blood sugars and diabetes and thyroid. You have a cardiologist for your heart. So dietitians can specialize in kidney nutrition, they can specialize in gut health, they can specialize in diabetes. Um, you, you briefly mentioned your hospital dietitian, James, which I worked in the hospital when I started, that is like a GP. I mean, you are seeing everybody for every condition. It, it, it's very, it's, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot. And we don't get time with patients like we do in, yeah. in our practice. So I feel for them. I know you said it was, you know, not the greatest, but I know you also know that that's not where you're going to get. Yeah. Now that I learned it, that what yeah. happened was she had a whole bunch of people to see and she probably had like two minutes at my door to look over, you know, my conditions. And she's like, oh, heart attack. He needs this one. Kidney. He needs this one. And they conflicted each other. There was no time to get to know me. Like when mm -hmm. I actually then went and saw a dietitian with an appointment. Mm -hmm. She got to know me. She made a plan um, and it was great. And, you know, a dietitian needs to learn about you because like we said, there's no one solution. Mm -hmm. If there was, then it works, but there isn't. They need to get to know you. They need that time so they can personalize your diet and your recommendations. Because uh, if, if all she did was recommend that I eat fish, I would have never stuck with it. And then right. it would be a failure. So she had to figure out, okay, I know what he needs. Let's figure out what he likes so I can get him to where he's eating what he needs. Exactly. And even uh, for our students in the Plant Powered Kidneys course, 
I talk about this all the time. I say, okay, we are here to teach you that foundation. We're here to teach you the things that you should be knowing about. So when you're ready to work one-on-one -on -one with a dietitian, <laughs> you can tell them, you can skip all the, the basics. I know this and, and you'll have questions outlined and you'll know really where to kind of prioritize things. So working one-on-one -on -one with a dietitian, you can get a ton of information if you are strapped for sessions, because oftentimes insurance will only cover a certain number of sessions, like Medicare only covers three hours with a dietitian each year, which for us, that is only like half of the course, or that's just like the first couple of weeks if you work with us one-on-one. -on -one. So it, it really depends on what your insurance covers and, and if you go that route or if you connect with somebody, somebody directly and you want to work with them and, and learn from them. So, um, so finding the ways that you can learn really well and finding somebody that will listen to you and help guide you, but really you're no matter what, you are in charge of the show. It is your health and your life. We can provide recommendations and ideas and suggestions based off what you tell us. But at the end of the road, it's your choice. It's your call and what you want to do. And you know, we're here to support you no matter what you choose. Now, before we end it for tonight, can you talk a little bit about the Plant Powered Kidney course? And we've mentioned it a few times. Um, for those that may be thinking like, she's mentioned that, but what exactly is that? Can you tell them about it? Because this, <laughs> I wish when I was sitting there in the ICU, even if the dietitians came in and said, look, I don't have time. I'm mm -hmm. sorry to give you what you need. Take this course. Oh my gosh. My life would have been so much better so quick it's, compared to all the yeah. months I had to do things wrong before I finally started to learn these things by finding the right kind of people. Yeah, it, it's it's incredible. I've been teaching this course for uh, three years now, and it gets better and better. I'm adding new information to it and updating things. And um, basically, this is a course that is on demand. It's self paced. So people when they register, they can start learning right away. There's, there's no waiting for the next appointment. It could be whenever you're ready to go, we have this developed to teach these fundamentals of kidney health. So uh, I cover the parameters of potassium, of sodium, of fluid, protein, phosphorus, carbohydrates, gut health. We talk about all these things and, and really kind of layer it to show how they build on each other and why they're important and how they connect. So with this, um, besides the course, we also provide six weeks worth of meal plans with over 120 something recipes that are plant-based and really focus on giving the nutrition that the kidneys are looking for. Um, so we have that as well. We have our incredible community. I mean, oh my gosh, chatting with everybody every day in the community. You can post in your questions, you share your homework assignments because I am a dietitian and a teacher at heart and I give you homework so that you learn and apply what you're learning. That's the most important thing. You actually practice what we're talking about. So you share your homework assignments and you see other students chiming in with their homework assignments and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I got I to go learn about carbohydrates and I want to see what we're talking about there. And I want to go learn about protein now. And this it, it's just a wonderful community, incredibly supportive. And I'm so happy to have that as part of part of the course and the program. So we have all of this really geared towards people who are in that early stage of CKD, who don't have a lot of guidance in what to be really paying attention to. Um, and we talk about the things to focus on and we talk about the things that you can know about, but not prioritize, not make everything an emergency and look at what are the best options and opportunities for you to take care of your kidneys. So it's really important that this is focused on early stage. I mean, we do have people in stage four, even stage five going into this program as well, but even with that, I would highly recommend working one on one with a dietitian because in those late stages, there can be more fragments and more important priorities that we might not get to. We won't get to as quickly for somebody of stage five trying to get their kidney function improved and stay off dialysis compared to somebody stage three who has more flexibility. So the course is really aimed towards people in that earlier stage. And um, it's, it's, it's just incredible. It's absolutely incredible. One of our, one of our students shared with us the other day, she's, she took the course and now she's staying on for monthly support calls. 
her GFR went from a 50, I'm trying to remember the exact numbers. I think it was a 52 to a 94, like unheard of. It's incredible. And I know Cindy had just commented in our in our call tonight talking about her doctor saying that she no longer has CKD to worry about. I mean, it, it's it's I'm not making these up. I'm not making these results up. And this is it's just so I'm so proud. I am so proud. And if this wasn't more, if this was more private of a call, I would use expletives because I'm so proud <laughs> that this is something that has impacted so many lives and it's just such an honor to be able to um to be a part of it and to teach it and to show people that just because you're early stage it doesn't mean sit back and wait it means take advantage take the opportunity do something now don't let it get to be that so yeah i <laughs> and for those that want to take the course they can go to plantpoweredkidneys.com there's also an updated link in the yeah. description, I had a link to the to a different wait list. There's the right link in the description you can click on, and it'll take you to the Plant Power Kidneys website to the right page so that you can learn when the next course is, sign up when they're available, get on the wait list. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I encourage anyone who wants to learn how to better protect your kidneys, how to better protect your heart, your health. This is not just your kidneys. This is your life, the rest of your life going forward, how to eat better. You're, you're going to enjoy food. You're not going to be afraid of it. Um, knowledge truly is power when it comes to kicking kidney disease to the curb. <laughs> yeah, it really is. It really, really is. And sometimes you don't know what you don't know, but I'm, I'm here to help and support and continue to be there for you guys. Awesome. Now we have, we are one comment shy of 100. So come on guys, let's just, <laughs> make a comment. Let's hit Tell 100. Me your favorite. Okay, <laughs> let's just do a vote. Let's do a quick poll. Who eats mushrooms and who thinks James should try mushrooms? <laughs> there we go. We'll like let people comment that so we hit <laughs> over 100 comments. I'm watching the number of comments. Like, yeah, hey, it's going to hit 100. I like that. I like watching the numbers increase. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Jen, for being here tonight. Um, and I want to thank everyone out there in the audience for being here. Oh, so we got people saying, try them, James. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I, I have to go to a restaurant that makes them. So at least I know they're good. Because um, <laughs> I did buy some once, but I don't remember what went wrong. Something went wrong. Yeah. I don't remember what it was. Um, other things I've... I've I've tried and I love jackfruit, uh, the brewer's yeast, all sorts of other great things. <laughs> but thank you all for being out here. I will be back tomorrow night again here at 7 p.m. with Dr. Rosansky. Um, and I'm going to start getting more shows back on the schedule now that things have settled down with me relocating from Southern Ohio up to Michigan. And I look forward to seeing all of you in the next video. Have a great night, everyone. <laughs> Bye.